million, and they focus on getting that 6% of every sale, because that's all they do. Right? So we can do some of this, right? We can probably we can probably see to it that our customers get access to instruments through Amazon. We can see to it that they get access to school supplies through Amazon. We can see see they get access to clothing through Amazon. Right? So there are ways for us to be able to do that. That's one way of being able to find the customers who are going to want to buy things that we can actually get paid for as an affiliate. They're going to buy it from us through our website and through our links. Right? Audience. Now there's another way to build an audience. Right? We can actually have what I call a platform. Platform. Right? What, what do I mean by platform? Again, um, this is kind of a it's kind of a, a term that I use when I meet, when I use the term platform. I typically mean a way of communicating about one subject, and that subject can be broad or narrow. Be broad or narrow. It typically works when it's a narrow subject, but some people do it in a broad way. What is a platform? What do I mean by having a platform? The platform allows me to communicate to people about something other than buying something from me. They come to my site because they're interested in the information that I have. Right? That's what they want. They, they're, they're coming to my site. They've chosen or they choose my site as a destination. In other words, I don't, I don't want to have to work to, to, to get the audience, all my audience. All I want to do is to have them come to my site. So what's a platform? Platform is going to be a blog. Could be a blog. So, in other words, I have a blog, and I'm going to erase this about the music because this is going to be a different. We're going to choose kind of a different way of thinking about this, even though we're still talking about an audience. We want to have a platform. A blog or a site where people are coming for information, solutions, sometimes they come because they're bored and they want entertainment, right? They're, they're, on the, they're on the web, they're coming for information, right? We can have a blog. Another way of doing that today, right, is, is we can actually have, um, we can have a podcast, right? We can have a podcast. If you're familiar with that, you may or may not be familiar with those or you don't listen to them, but it's basically a way of being able to get audio on your mobile device or your internet or and you are going to be communicating audio. An audio podcast. People are coming to get the same thing. They're coming to get information, solutions, entertainment on one subject. Right? One subject. That can also be a platform. A platform can be, right, so it can also be video. Right, video. Right? And there are people who have video-based platforms. So <clears throat> what do we do with that? Well, this is the same, this works pretty much the same way as it works when people are actually have a have a have an audience. We are trying to get them to, based on the information that they're coming to get. Right? We're, remember, we're talking about one subject. And so based on that subject and the information people are getting, we should have some idea of the kind of things that they buy. What do these people buy? What do they buy? If they're coming for this kind of information, and we have some idea of who they are, right, we should be able to determine something that they are buying. And what we're going to do then is we are going to then start looking for other things that we're going to buy. Now, let's say that blog, the blog is about cooking, right? Cooking, right? It's about it's a cooking, food blog, foodie, something, <laughs> uh, foodie. It's about food, about cooking. People who are into cooking, they're going to buy stuff, right? They're going to buy. Um, they're going to buy cook. They're going to buy utensils. They're going to buy books. Right? They're going to be doing research. They're going to buy uh, sometimes classes. 
They're going to buy. So, so they're looking for information on how to cook things better. Right? So they're going to be buying stuff. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in the way. Right? When they are going to look for um, their stuff to buy, their, their, their cooking utensils to buy stuff. When they're looking to buy books right, to help them to become better in, in, in cooking, we want to make sure that we are in the way. When they're looking to buy classes right, and get more information, we want to be able to be in the way. And so all of the ways that we can do this, all that we're looking for is we are looking for different ways to be an affiliate, to sell cooking classes. Right? We can sell cooking classes through a site called ClickBank. We can sell it through a site called Udemy. We can sell it through a site called Teachable. Right? All of these are ways for us to be able to sell, right? For us to be able to sell classes. And we can actually be affiliates. So that every time somebody goes to buy some new information about something they're trying to learn, we're going to get paid a percentage of this. Right? And again, coming back to this, remember <clears throat> that when we're looking at what are we going to be an affiliate to, information is typically going to be the most profitable because people can afford to pay you 50% for a new customer. Why are they willing to pay you 50%? Because it doesn't cost them anything to produce this, right? It only costs them the, cost them the hosting to have it, right? And so having this means then that basically what you're going to have here is you're going to have somebody who can who can actually who can actually uh, uh, pay out pay you um, the fifty percent every time somebody buys one of classes through these areas, right? Also books, right? We come back to Amazon, right? But Amazon's not going to be the only place for cooking books. Right? But we want to find all the places for who have affiliate programs that have to do with cooking. And we want to make these available to the people who are coming to our platform. Right? So who's coming to our blog? We want to make sure that those things are visible to them. Who is coming to our podcast? Right? We want to make sure those things are visible to them. Who is watching our videos. We want to make sure those things are uh, visible to them. Right? And, so we, and so we make it for them. And so every time that we do this, we're actually being paid when someone actually makes a sale. Now, <clears throat> that's sort of the what. Let's talk about the, the why. Let's talk about the why. Okay? Uh, <laughs> all right, so, so why do you want to do it? Why would someone pay you? Uh, why does someone pay you? Because, plain and simple, as I said, you are doing the advertising. You're doing the work. Right? So every time you bring them a customer, that's one less customer that they have to bring in. And what they're trying to do is they are trying to get the customer that you bring to them into their email, into their social, into their Twitter, so they can start to communicate with the customer. If, if you didn't do this for them, right? if, you did not, if you did not bring them customers, they would have to pay for these customers. But instead, they're just going to pay you 50, 50, 6 to 50% of a sale and the benefit of that is that they're not paying for a customer up front. Right? They're paying for a customer after they got a sale. So for anybody who's actually doing any kind of marketing, it is, it is, a, is a fantastic way to market, get your product out there, to let somebody else do the work. Right? So that's why they can afford to pay you the 50%. So I know that that tends to be a sticking point with, it, with, 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 with us is you kind of think, well, why would somebody want to pay me to sell their product. Why would they want to pay me so much? Well, the reason they want to pay you is because you are doing the work for them. 
you are actually bringing them the customer. They don't have to pay for the customer, and so they're willing to pay you. And that is why some people, when they figure out how to get the audience, this is all they do. They don't bother with customer service. All they want to do is to bring other people customers. Right? Now, based on that, I want to talk about one aspect of this as we close, because it is an important aspect of affiliate marketing. If you think about this aspect, you are bringing them a customer. But, typically, if you're, if you're using, if you have a platform, and you're talking about one subject, the question's going to be, who does that customer belong to? If you can bring this company a customer, and this customer is going to be worth X number of dollars to you buying affiliate products, then one of the things that you are going to want to do is to make sure that you make these your customers. So being able to bring them to another website, that's great. But you want to make sure that these are your customers. And you're going to do that by making sure that even though you're, you're, you're bringing them, let's say, to Amazon, you maintain your own email marketing list, even as an affiliate, right? Even as an affiliate, even though you're selling other people's products, you want to make sure that everybody who comes to, comes to you, they remain your customer. So how do you do that? Well, one of the things that you do is you're going to maintain an email list. I'm going to show you, uh, you know, those of you who want to go on, I'm going to show you that in the intensive, how to build your own list, how you set it up so that everybody that comes to your site, they become part of your database. But this is what you want to do. You want to put these people in a database so that what you can do is you can send an email You can have them look at, a, look at an affiliate product, have them look at an affiliate product. Some will buy, but these people still remain whose customer? They still remain your customer, right? And so every time that you send an email and they buy through you, but they remain your customer, means then that you now have something, this email marketing list, that is an asset to you. This is an asset to you. Right? This becomes the thing that you and I start to manage so that we take care of these people. We make sure that you know, some of, the, uh, you know, some of the, the, uh, the, the products and services that we're showing them as an affiliate, that they match the things that they really want, they have good quality. So we just don't want to send them anything. We want to maintain this list because this is our asset, even as an affiliate. And so part of affiliate marketing means I am going to manage my communications with them. Now again, you can do this through fan pages and social media, and a lot of people are doing this through um, Instagram and Facebook. There is science out right now that this right, is good for the customer but not good for the, for the marketer because people are distracted extremely. And on these mediums, they are, they are uh, fantastically distracted and just as likely to buy from somebody else as they are to us. There's no loyalty to you here, but when you have someone whose attention you have here on your email marketing list, you have their attention and when you communicate with them, you have their sole attention, right? even if it's just for a second. So coming back, what are we trying to do in affiliate market? We are selling other people's products, whether it's a retailer, a services, a product direct, or information. What we are trying to do is we are trying to build based on our audience, right? And we are building based on this audience, and we are finding customers for other people. But remember that the key to this, right, just recapping, is this, right? It's this, maintaining an email marketing list. Right? Maintaining an email marketing list. And this becomes really the key 
to being a good affiliate, at least one key. So now the question is going to be, how do we get people onto this list, right? Right? How do we get people onto this list? There are going to be two things we've got to do. Number one, we've got to continue with our platform or building our audience. Right? If you've got a product or service, this means that you know, you're continually getting new prospects. If you've got a platform, you're continually getting new listeners. Right? Now, there are ways to do outreach on both ends. Right? So if you're a small business or you are, you're, you're, you're out looking for prospects, you know, I talk about that in the intensive where you can actually get more prospects, um, continue to put prospects into the top of your, whatever you call your marketing funnel, so that you're continually building this email marketing list. Because one of the things that's going to happen is the minute that you actually say, actually offer someone something, you try to sell them something, some people are going to say, nope, I'd rather unsubscribe. And so you've got to, you, you really got to constantly